Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at differential analysis and specifically we're going to be looking at make or buy decision and in the business term we call this outsourcing. This topic is covered on the cost and a cost accounting course as well as the CPA exam BEC section. As always I'm going to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn and check out my YouTube where I have 1800 plus accounting auditing tax finance as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures please like them and share them. Look if they're benefiting you it means they might benefit at other people please share the wealth on my website farhatlectures.com you will find additional resources to complement and supplement this course as well as other accounting and finance courses i strongly suggest you check out my website so let's take a look at make or buy decision or outsourcing what are the decision rules what when sh what what should we do well we should choose the option with the lowest relevant cost and hopefully we all know what relevant costs are if not i'm going to remind you about relevant costs in a moment that's the first thing we look at we have compared the relevant cost and we take into account qualitative consideration now the good thing about being in school, you don't have to worry about qualitative consideration. All you have to worry about is the quantitative, the relevant cost. But in the real world, you have to take a look into account if there's any factors other than the numbers that will help you reject or accept make or buy offer. So remember, the relevant costs are the differential costs. And what are the differential costs? Usually they are the direct labor, direct material, variable overhead, usually the variable cost. Why? Because variable cost varies with your production. So if you are going to be buying it, those will be eliminated, should be eliminated. Also, you have to take a look to see if you can eliminate some of the fixed costs. Some of the fixed costs fixed cost might be eliminated as a result of buying the product because if you are using a building you may just and you're leasing that building and you're not using it anymore you may cancel the lease and move out and remove that fixed cost that's a possibility but again in our situation you, you're going to be told in the problem whether the fixed cost is eliminated or not and obviously you have to take into account you're buying it the purchase price how much are you paying for it usually those are the three factors that you would look into when you are making make or buy decision the best way to illustrate this is to look at an actual example cube manufacturing usually produces its own parts of assembly the following data are available for the parts this is the uh, manufacturing cost. They have a variable cost of $6 per unit and they have a fixed cost of $15,000. Non-manufacturing cost, there's a variable cost of a dollar, fixed cost of $9,000. And this is the fixed cost. Again, we could always uh, assume, not assume, but generally speaking, variable costs will be eliminated if you, if you, make, if you buy the product. Cube needs 2,000 unit every month an outside supplier offers to deliver that part for 1150 what should we do should we accept the offer or not accept the offer cube can also save half of the fixed manufacturing cost so when this fixed manufacturing cost is 15000 if we buy we no longer have to worry about half of it so we could eliminate 15000 we still have the other 15000 there's nothing we can do about this 9000 fixed non manufacturing are not affected so what should we do? Well, we have to compare between two alternatives. What we are doing now and the alternative. What are we are doing now? Well, right now, we are incurring variable cost of $7, which is 6 plus 1, times 2,000 unit, which is equal to 14,000. So the variable cost right now is 14,000. We have 15,000 and 9,000 of fixed cost. That's 24,000. In total, let's see in total how much would that be. In total, we'll have, right now, it's costing us 38,000. What is the alternative? Well, the alternative, if we, if we, if we, um, if we take, if we buy from another party, we no longer have any variable cost. That's going to be gone. The fixed manufacturing, the, the fixed cost, some of it will be eliminated. Remember, we're going to keep the 7,500 7, of the non-manufacturing -manufac and the non-manufacturing will stay with us all of it. So we're going to have 16,500 of fixed cost plus we're going to have to buy the product of for 23,000. So if we buy, the factor is 39,500, the total cost. So basically, if we look at the difference, variable costs will be lower fixed costs will be lower but the purchase price will be higher by 23 the net is a higher of 1500 now the question is what should you do well based on the numbers based on strictly quantitative numbers you would reject you don't want to buy from an outside party now why would you buy well there are other non-qualitative factors for example the quality of the unit maybe this 
company that you are buying from part a31 and that's all what they do and because that's all what they do they may be specialized into this product and as a result they might have a better quality and as a result it might be worth it for you to pay the 1500 also if you outsource you may simplify and streamline your operation you have one less thing to worry about therefore maybe it's worth 1500 this extra money to pay to streamline and make your process much much smoother at your company let's add a, um, a, a an assumption here if the facility used to produce part a31 can be leased out to generate a monthly rental income of 3000 what should we do under those circumstances now we're changing the scenario we are saying what happened if you can if you do buy you could lease this extra space for 3000 well guess what what are you doing now well right now if we, basically this is this 3000 is an opportunity cost but this is a good example of an opportunity cost simply put because you are producing the product yourself it's taken up a space because it's taken up a space it, there's an opportunity cost that you are missing out and what's that opportunity cost the next best thing you can do with that space is rent it for 3000 lease it out therefore what it's really costing you your true cost is the 14000 the 24000 plus there's an opportunity cost of three thousand therefore your true cost is forty one thousand dollars that's your true cost assuming you take into account opportunity cost if you buy it it's going to cost you same computation thirty nine thousand five hundred now what happened is this now we 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 change our uh, computation and as a result we find out that you are you are better off buying the product because you are at 1500 lower now another way to look at this 3000 is to say well it doesn't have to be an opportunity cost really what's going to happen it's going to be an extra income for you because you can rent the property so it's basically it's a reduction you know it's a reduction here so whatever you have the 3000 as an opportunity cost here or the 3000 as a savings under buying it because you have extra income it's going to cost you less to buy it doesn't matter the answer will be 1500 lower now the question is what should you do should you should if you take into account this 3000 should you buy or should you not buy again you have to take into account the quality of the suppliers and remember now you have to worry about renting the property at 3000 so you have to find a tenant if you find a tenant what happens if you have a bad tenant you know they don't pay they give you a lot of problems so that that could be an issue also when you buy from another company their problems become your problem in what sense once you rely on them anything that happened at that company like a strike or there's a change of management and as a result now they have inferior product that's going to affect you also because you are buying from them you have to worry about the logistics how are they going to deliver it to you what if there's any problem in the uh, supply chain Especially let's, especially, let's assume you are relying on from someone in China and we are living through COVID. What, what's going to happen to your supply chain? Well, your product, they may or may not be able to, de to deliver the product. So that's why you have to take into account other factors than just the numbers. That's the point that I'm trying to make. So again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to invite you to like this recording if you like it, share it, and also I'm going to remind you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, for additional resources for this course as, as well as your other courses if you're studying for your cpa exam i strongly suggest you check out my website make an investment in your career it's a 30 to 40 year investment if you pass the exam don't shortchange yourself good luck study hard and most importantly stay safe